Okay, so we've created this enormous computer network, and now billions of computers all over the world can talk to each other. But what are they going to say to each other? So that brings us to the question of what is a protocol? Because protocols are what define how computers communicate on the internet. And protocols are really important because computers, unlike humans, need very structured ways to communicate with each other. Humans are great with spoken language, and so there are lots of different ways that we can communicate with each other uh, that involve nuance. So for example, if I want Greg to do something, like for example, I might want Greg to shoot a dart from this Nerf gun at me, right? So I could say, Greg, could you please shoot me with the Nerf gun? Um, and and he, might, he might try to do that. Um, but ah, okay, so that worked, right? I could also say like, hey Greg, shoot me again. Okay, so the point is that there's a lot of different ways for me to ask Greg uh, to shoot me with the Nerf gun for whatever reason, um, and that's because humans are so good with, with language, right? Computers, on the other hand, not so much. And so computers need very rigid, strict rules about how they should communicate with each other. And to some degree, that's what protocols are. And what protocols do is they specify two types of things about packet-based communication. So imagine I have computer A and computer B, and they want to communicate with each other over this huge internet that we've built. So how do they do that? There's two things that they need to agree on, and there are two things that will be specified in the protocol. The first thing is when Computer A sends a packet to computer B. What's in the packet? What's the structure of the contents of the packet? So in order to communicate, they need to agree on, you know, for example, maybe the first part of the packet is a field that indicates what kind of packet it is. And each protocol has its own specification for the structure of the packets themselves. So that's the first thing they need to agree on. The second thing they need to agree on is how is this communication pattern going to unfold? So for example, when computer B gets a packet of type one from computer A, what should it do next? Should it, for example, it, the protocol might specify that it sends back a packet of type two. So this is kind of a silly protocol. Um, but the protocols require uh, that we have these very rigid rules. And again, there's two reasons for that. One is because computers are particularly bad at understanding nuance. So if computer A sends a packet that's like, hey, computer B, send me a packet two, computer B wouldn't know what to do. And so we need these really, really strict guidelines. The other reason the protocols are so important, and the other reason the protocols, how protocols are designed and written is so important, is because protocols are implemented by humans. So, for example, computer A and computer B, in order to implement this protocol, some software developer had to actually write software, write computer code that runs on these computers. And in a lot of cases on the internet, particularly when we talk about super widespread protocols like IP, the internet protocol, the implementations of these protocols were actually built by different people. So somebody wrote the software that runs on computer A that implements this protocol, and some other person wrote the software on computer B that implements the same protocol. And so the protocol specification, which lays out how the protocol works, has to be written very carefully so that the software developer who wrote the code on A and the software developer who wrote the code on B will both produce an implementation that interoperates with each other. So if the specification isn't accurate enough, it's possible that these two computers will become confused as they communicate with each other. So in short, this is what a protocol is. It defines this very structured communication space uh, that allows multiple computers on the internet to interact with each other and to communicate. So this is really a way of structuring commu computer communication. And there's two things that the protocol has to do. The first is it has to structure the contents of the packets themselves. And the second thing it has to do is it has to determine how the computers that are running the protocol uh, respond when they receive various types of packets or various types of requests from other computers on the internet. Wait, stop shooting me, Greg, stop! Ah.